Welcome to the official book launch of the book, Sing a Song of Hawker Food by Lian Ong and Janice Ku, illustrated by Chow. I am Su An from World Scientific Education, your host for today. To celebrate this special occasion, we are going to have an interactive evening of singing rhymes, doodling, and prizes to be won with a quiz at the end. So play, pay close attention and you may find information that will help you in the quiz later. Please also grab a piece of paper and a pencil to doodle along with Chow. To kickstart the evening, please welcome Lian and Janice on screen to officially launch their book. Hi everyone, thanks Hello. for joining us. Hey Janice, it's dinner time and guess what? Our friend Humpty Dumpty sent us something. Just in time for dinner. Yeah, let's see what he got for us. Okay. Aren't you curious to see what's inside? Yes, there are three levels, so mm. let's mm. see. Oh, in the first one, there seems to be some musical instruments. Okay, I'm not sure what he meant by that. Oh, and in the second curious. level, do you recognize what this is? Maybe looks I'll take like, it out so you can see clearly. This looks like Gaia toast with a big cube of butter. Mm, mm. Kaya toast. You know what? That is Humpty Dumpty's favorite food, and that is actually what right, he yeah. eats in our book. Okay. Have that? Oh, look. And on the last level of my th of the thing cut that he sent, there's a little note. I'm going to read the note. Oh, he's so sweet. Look, a personal note from Humpty Dumpty. Let what me read it, it out. Okay. It says, Dear Leanne, Janice, and Chow, Thank you for writing a book about me and all my friends. We loved eating Singapore hawker food and visiting the hawker centers. Mm -hmm. I hereby declare your book, Sing a Song of Hawker Food, Humpty Dumpty and Friends Have a Singapore Hawker Feast, officially launched. Yay! Yay! Sing a song of hawker food, yummy meals for all. What's your favorite dish and where's your favorite stall? Scrumptious food found everywhere, any time of day. Let's go to the hawker center, I will lead the way. The hawker wakes up early, making sure he's ready. He's got a lot of work to do, but he is very steady. His recipe is secret, it's from long ago. The food is good, the queue is long, and that is how you know. Three blind mice Hungry for lunch Hungry for lunch They ordered Hainanese chicken rice They wanted duck sauce but then to their surprise The chili burned, they drank gobi with ice These three blind mice Thank you, Lian and Janice, and congratulations on the launch of your book, Sing a Song of Hawker Food. Sing a Song of Hawker Food features familiar nursery rhymes with a local twist featuring Singapore hawker food. It is also beautifully illustrated to highlight aspects of Singapore hawker culture that children will have fun identifying and learning more about. In addition to the fun rhymes and beautiful pictures, the books come to life with augmented reality features, giving you an enhanced experience that you'll never forget. These AR features are easily accessed through the free SnapLearn app, which you can download on your Apple or Android phones. Now, just some housekeeping notes before we go into the session for today. There are going to be many chances for you to participate in tonight's interactive session through the comments section. Please feel free to type in the comments at any time. Leanne, Janice and Chow will be most happy to answer any questions that you might have at the Q&A session nearer the end. Just type your question in the comments and start the questions with your name so that we can know who you are. 
After today, the recording of this session will also be posted online, so you can come back and re-watch it if you want to hear the rhymes again. Now, are we ready? Let's invite Lian and Janice to introduce themselves and lead us in a rhyme singing session where we can get to know more about hawker food in Singapore. Hi everyone, my name is Leanne. I'm a children's author and this is my 16th book. Last year, I really, really wanted to write a book about hawker food and also nursery rhymes. So I invited my friend to join me. I'm Janice Koo and this is my first book. And I'm really happy I got to write this book with Leanne because it's about all my favorite things hawker food and nursery rhymes. And the pictures in this book were drawn by Chow, uh, our illustrator. Chow, can you say something about yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Chow and I'm the illustrator of this book. Um, this also is my first book that I have illustrated and I'm very excited uh, to be here today with you guys. So this is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to share with you some of the rhymes in our book and we're going to invite you to sing along with us and talk about rhyming. And after that, Chow is going to lead us in a doodling session. He's going to show us um, how to draw some of the pictures in the book. So um, get your paper and pencils ready for that. Mm -hmm. And of course, there must be some prizes to be won at the end. So stay tuned all the way to the end for our little quiz. And you'll also get to ask us any question you want. Almost any question. Almost any question. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so stay tuned right to the end. Next slide, please. Oh, well, first thing, most importantly, we want to talk about your favorite hawker food. Would you be able to tell us what's your favorite hawker food? You can type it inside the comments box now. Well, I will tell you my favorite mm -hmm. hawker food. It's dinner time and I'm, I'm thinking about food. <laughs> and um, my favorite hawker food is fishball noodles. I like the round fish balls and the long slurpy noodles and i like my noodles with a lot of chili yummy mm. that is true janice is always looking for the best fishball noodles yeah. <laughs> my favorite hawker food is satay um i like the meat um of satay because it's you know it's so well seasoned it's sort of sweet and there's the peanut gravy um and i like to go around comparing like who has the best peanut gravy um and i also like to watch the satay man grilling um the satay you know it's just part of the whole experience how many sticks of satay can you eat each time here i'm not going to tell you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, some people say they like, oh, bachor mee. I'm yes. with you there. Mm. Mm. Uh, nasi lemak, mm. laksa, yes. Oh, and yes, we have two laksas. Very mm. good. Popular dish. Oh, and I think um, chicken rice is also very, very important. Like yeah. if I go overseas, um, you know, and the first thing I do when I want to come back, the first thing I eat when I, when I come back is chicken rice. It just instantly tells me I'm home. Mm, yeah. Yum. Well, when I want something cold and sweet, um, I want ice kacang. Something just filled with beans and ice. That, mm. That's kind, my kind of dessert. Mm. It's very important to end the meal on a sweet note. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone, someone here likes roti prata. Oh, it's okay. a very popular choice too. Yes. And we have a rhyme about that later. Mm. Mm. Okay, next slide, please. Ah, so in this uh, first rhyme that we want to share with you, it's called Sing a Song of Hawker Food. And it's to the tune of Sing a Song of Sixpence, which I think most of you know. But first, let's look at the picture. Um, look closely at the picture. What do you see is happening? There's lots of things happening. Can you tell us? Well, we see people. Lots of people, mm. people doing different things. Yep. There's a queue for the, the stall right at the end. Um, you know, usually hawker centers, right? Or hawker stalls, if you see a queue, right? That's usually a good sign. It means that that stall has good food. It's really popular, right? <laughs> if the queue is long, no people want to eat it. <laughs> yes, and you see the lady in the blue t-shirt in the queue. She's carrying something like this, um, which is called a, a tingkat. It's a 
basically a reusable container in, in, in a tier and it's locked up. Um, so when you go to the hawker center, you can bring this along so that um, you don't have to use disposable, uh, you know, to buy the takeaway food in and use disposables because that's not good for the environment. Yeah, so you can enjoy your hawker food and um, look after the earth too. I see some people here sitting at tables, mm. eating. So after they've bought their food, they can find a seat and eat their food right there. Mm. There's a man in the, in the front, in the blue shirt, and you see he's got his mobile <laughs> phone, you know, taking a picture of the food he's eating, probably going to post it on his um, social media. And, you know, that's a nice thing to do because um, we can sort of share with our friends uh, where our favorite hawker stalls are, and I'm always on the lookout for that. You must try it, right? Yes. I see a man holding a tray, and he's walking to the tray return station. What do you think he's doing? Oh, he's he's done with his meal, so mm. he's returning his his bowl and cup and utensils. That's the right thing to do. It's he's the right cleared thing his to table do. Yeah. so that the the next person using the table has a clean table to use. Yep, that's good. Um, hawker center etiquette. Yes. Okay, so shall we sing this rhyme together? Mm, let's do that. Yeah, okay. So, um, this is your starting note. Say, sing. One, two, ready, go. Sing a song of hawker food, yummy meals for all. What's your favorite dish and where's your favorite stall? Scrumptious food found everywhere, any time of day. Let's go to the hawker center, I will lead the way. The hawker wakes up early, making sure he's ready. He's got a lot of work to do, but he is very steady. His recipe is secret, it's from long ago the food is good the queue is long and that is how you know i can hear you all singing well <laughs> sort of <laughs> but if you didn't quite get that let's try it again one more time okay shall we okay sing one two ready go sing a song of hawker food yummy meals for all what's your favorite dish and where's your favorite stall scrumptious food found everywhere any time of day let's go to the hawker center i will lead the way the hawker wakes up early making sure he's ready he's got a lot of work to do but he is very steady his recipe is secret it's from long ago the food is good the queue is long and that is how you know well done that was good singing <laughs> okay next slide please oh what do we have here oh look hey Who's it's this? itsy yes say hi to itsy bitsy you know janice did you hear what happened to itsy bitsy yesterday what happened well you know it was raining very heavily pouring yesterday. pouring and she went out and the rain came down and washed her away poor thing. poor thing you know things are always happening to itsy bitsy and in our rhyme something happens to her also so let's find out what happens just give me a second there we go all right okay so we are going to sing this rhyme together try and sing along okay it's, it's to the tune of itsy bitsy spider and you can do your actions as well okay the one two ready go the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the milo mug down slipped her feet there went the little bug she longed to drink the Milo dinosaur, so the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the mug once more. Poor itsy. Hmm. Have you had a Milo dinosaur before? I have. It's delicious. Yeah, it is. It's so sweet, but I only regret it after. But before, <laughs> I always want it. <laughs> so you should drink it. <laughs> yes. And so I don't blame Itsy for wanting to drink that Milo dinosaur so much and trying her very best to climb up the slippery mug. That's perseverance. Mm. Shall we do this again? Yes. Mm. Okay. The one, two, ready, go. The Itsy Bitsy Spider climbed up the Milo mug. Down slipped her feet, there went the little bug. 
She longed to drink the Milo dinosaur, so the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the mug once more. Yay. Hey, Leah, do you notice something interesting about the words here? Mm, it rhymes. Yeah, there's some words that rhyme, right? <laughs> like Milo mug. Can you tell me what rhymes with mug? Mug. M U G. Mm, mug. mug. Well, I think the word that rhymes is bug. Yes. B U G. That's right. Mug and bug. Mm -hmm. What about the next stanza? Milo dinosaur. What rhymes with dinosaur? Dinosaur. Well, mm. the rhyming word would be more. More dinosaur because it see wants to climb up the mug once more. Mm -hmm. Right. Next slide. So this book is about rhymes and we want to talk about rhymes, words that rhyme. All right. Can we have the next slide, please? All right. Here's a little exercise mm -hmm. for everyone. Sate. What rhymes with sate? Mm. Chair. Or play? Does chair rhyme with satay or does play rhyme with satay? If you know the answer, you can put it inside the comments box. Sate. Like chair. Sate. Chair. Mm. Mm. Nope. Mm. Play? Sate. Play. Mm. Yes, I think that rhymes. Yep. <laughs> Shall we try the next one? Let's try the next one. Fishball. Mm. Does it rhyme with stall or moon? <laughs> Fishball. Listen very carefully. Fishball <laughs> and stall. Fishball, moon. Okay. Nah. All right. I think the correct answer is fishball and stall. Okay. Somebody has put in play, but I think that was, that was the, the previous one. Okay. One. Yeah. yeah. Stall. I think stall rhymes with fishball much better than moon, don't you think? Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. Fishball rhymes with stall. Yay. Yay. Okay, Sophia has got it right. I, I'm sure it's Sophia's kids, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next slide. Hmm. Dinosaur. Well, in our rhyme, dinosaur rhymes with more, but what else does it rhyme with? Drink or straw. Mm. Drink, straw. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think it rhymes with straw. Dinosaur, straw. Dinosaur. Yep, sounds good. Sounds right. Yes. Mm. Next one. Okay. Something oh, a little more no difficult. No helping words mm. here. What does rice rhyme with? Can you give some suggestions? We're gonna give you some time. You yes. can put your answers in the comments, and we'll just see what you come up with. What rhymes with rice? Rice. Dinosaur? No. no. Rice. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yes. Nice rhymes with. Very good. Nice rhymes nice. with rice. What else? There are many, many words that can rhyme with rice. Can I try one? Sure. Surprise. 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 Yes, surprise. Yeah. Surprise does rhyme. Mm. Ice. Ah, oh, yeah. What we need for ice kacang. What else do we have? Lies. Yes. <laughs> Lies. Oh, Emily says lice rhymes <laughs> with rice. Yes, but I'm wondering what kind of rhyme would it be if I have to talk about <laughs> rice and lice in the same rhyme. Hmm. We would have to use our imaginations <laughs> yeah. for that. I hope it's not the hawker that has the lice. <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, how about the next slide then? Mm. Oh, here are some possible answers. So some of you put nice. Other words that rhyme are spice, mice, and surprise, yes. Mm. Next slide, please. Okay, this is another rhyme from our book. And what we've done is we have taken away two words and you can help us complete the rhyme. Okay, you just have to use your ears and yes. um, hear it. Okay. I will read the first stanza first. Okay. Okay. 
Roll, roll, roll the dough. Stretch it all around. Flip and swing it in the air. Then you slap it. That's a clue. Mm -hmm. What word would you put there? Any suggestions? You can put your answer in the comment section. Oh, Jack, Jack Chen, Chen. Well done. says down. Very good. That is the correct answer. So for the second verse, it says, Fry, fry, fry the dough till it's crisp and light. Roti prata, eat it hot. Quickly have a... What word should it what be? Would that be? What do you want to do with hot and crispy roti prata? Yeah. Roti prata, eat it hot. Quickly have a... Let's Any answers? see what the comments say. Uh -huh. Okay, Sophia's kids again have <laughs> given the answer. It's bite and, and Jack, Jack as well. Bite, very good. Very good. That rhymes. So this... Uh, actually is a rhyme in our book uh, about roti prata. Can we have the next slide? We're going to sing it for yes, you. We're going to sing it for you now. Okay. This is to the tune of a very familiar song, Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Okay. Row, one, two, ready, go. Row, row, row the dough, stretch it all around. Flip and swing it in the air, then you slap it down. Fry, fry, fry the dough till it's crisp and light. Roti prata, eat it hot, quickly have a bite. Good. That was good singing. I'm sure you are singing wherever you are. Are you? <laughs> well, we, we should do this again, right? Let's do it again. Yeah. And if you didn't catch it the first time, let's try again. Okay. Roll, one, two, ready, go. Roll, roll, roll the dough. Stretch it all around. Flip and swing it in the air. Then you slap it down. Fry, fry, fry the dough till it's crisp and light. Roti prata, eat it hot. Quickly have a bite. Yay! That was good singing. <laughs> okay, next slide. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. I want to talk about roti prata. Yeah, sorry. Can right we right at the beginning of this um this show, we were talking about our favorite food and yes. how roti prata is actually so popular. And yes. you know, Lian, how do you like to eat your roti prata? Well, if I'm having lunch, I will have roti prata with egg and curry. Mm. But if I'm just, you know, having a snack. Mm. Uh, or supper, then I'll probably do sweet and have roti prata with sugar. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Mm, I really like my roti prata with a curry, but um, sometimes when I feel like something sweet, I like the crunchy sugar that's that's um, mm. um, hidden inside the roti prata. Mm. I like I like both. Yeah, mm. but you know the hawkers are amazing. They they work so hard to prepare food for us, and we can choose roti mm. prata on its own roti prata with egg, roti prata with curry, with sugar, mm. and and they do it in different ways. I'm very glad that they do that, and they work really hard. They start yeah. the day early and they end late. Yeah, it's true. Hawkers are so amazing. They cook such delicious food for us, and it's affordable, and they work such long days. You know, so let's sing a song um, that really recognizes the work that they do. Next slide, please. Um, this is a, well, I guess it's a lullaby. It's to the tune of, I'm sure everyone knows, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. But it's really about, um, you know, the long work day that hawkers have. And they also need to go home and rest. So next time you go to the hawker center and you order hawker food, um, show some appreciation for your hawker. Um, and, you know, thank him for working so hard and cooking delicious food for you. Um, shall we sing this song? Let's yeah. do that. Okay. Twing, one, two, ready, go. Twinkle, twinkle, little light. Time to close up for the night. Wash the pots, put them away. Ready for another day. 
Twinkle, twinkle, little light, switch it off, go home, good night. That is such a lovely lullaby. Um, maybe you can sing that tonight before you go to sleep. Shall we do it again? Twing, one, two, ready, go. Twinkle, twinkle, little light, time to close up for the night. Wash the pots, put them away, ready for another day. Twinkle, twinkle, little light, switch it off, go home, Good night. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Next Thanks. slide. And now we're really, really happy to have our illustrator child join us. He's going to show us how he drew some of the characters in the book. And you know, Chow is actually a very, very funny person. And he really made the drawings in this book super funny and i hope he can show you how over to you chow hi everyone <clears throat> oops um okay so uh hello again my name is chow and i'm the illustrator of a uh, singer song of hawker food um that means that i drew all the pictures in this in this book um and today i'm going to share with you how i drew some of the characters um as you can see, there are many characters, very familiar characters. See if you can recognize any of them. See, you have, uh, you have the three blind mice over here. You have a black sheep. And then you have a little spider. Whoops, this side, spider. And of course, at the center of it all, you have this guy, very recognizable from his shape. And yes, we are going to draw this character. His name is Humpty Dumpty. And I hope you have your paper and your pencil or you can also use a pen or, or a marker, uh, whatever works for you. I, re I recommend a pencil be only because you can, you can erase if you have to. So I'm gonna draw on my, on my tablet here and you'll be able to see it, okay? So we're gonna draw Humpty Dumpty. I have here with me an egg, right? This egg here is basically what Humpty Dumpty is. What shape is this, All right? This is basically an oval. So we're gonna draw an oval. And an oval is can be a little bit tricky if you've never drawn an oval before, but it's basically just a uh, a squash circle, isn't it? Oops, let me get the. Uh, yep, here it is. So here I have kind of an oval, not the perfect oval, but you can make it perfect if you have the time. Don't worry if it's not perfect. We're doodling here. So doodling is just drawing for fun, it's for yourself, okay? So don't worry if it's not perfect. Don't worry if it's not exactly like the way I draw, I draw it. Um, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna give Humpty Dumpty some clothes because Humpty Dumpty is a very uh, very fancy kind of, kind of guy, right? I'm gonna draw a dot in the, somewhere in the middle over here. Can you see that dot? I'm gonna draw like a slanted line here another line over here, kind of like a V, but not, not like this, a bit more like this, okay? And then I'm gonna draw a small little inverted V over here. And then I'm gonna close it off with a line like this. And you can see that it's actually another very simple shape, two of them, two triangles. And you can kind of guess what they are. They are the collar. See, I'm wearing a shirt with a collar today because today is a special day. And then I'm going to draw a line down here, right? Because you have this line in the shirt. And of course, to fasten the two sides together, you have little things called buttons. And buttons come in all shapes and sizes even, but most commonly circles. So I'm going to give my circle buttons. You can draw two or three, depending on how much space you have. And there you have it. You have, you have an oval wearing a shirt. Well, that looks kind of odd doesn't it? Because now what's missing? We need a face. And most important part of a cartoon character, I think, are the eyes. So I'm going to draw oval shape for the eyes. See, like this, and I'm going to draw like this. And I'm going to give him eyebrows, because eyebrows make a person or a character 
more expressive, right? If you don't want it like this, you can also draw it maybe one like this and one like this. It's up to you, okay? Let's say like this. And then um, my version of the of Humpty Dumpty does not have a nose, but if you want to have a nose, you can. You can have a little nose like this, okay? Or you can have a big nose like this. It's completely up to you. But my, my version does not have a nose because I like my Humpty Dumpty to have a big mouth. I like to save the space for a big giant mouth because Humpty Dumpty loves to eat. He loves to eat hawker food, right? So that's my mouth. And then I'm gonna give him arms dangling on the sides here, okay? And he's a fancy guy, so he wears a shirt with cuffs on the other side as well, okay? With cuffs. And then I'm gonna give him fingers. How many fingers does Humpty Dumpty have? Nobody knows because nobody has ever met a giant talking egg before. So we're going to assume like a human, he has five, a thumb, one, two, three, four fingers. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. If you want to give him three fingers or four fingers, that's fine as well. And then, all right. I'm sorry. I, I, I should have drawn him a little bit further up here. I'm going to move him here. Okay, so I have some space to draw his legs. Okay, legs like this, he likes to wear pants. He's very well dressed for someone who goes to the hawker center. Okay, even in the hot weather in Singapore, he's dressed to the nines. And there you have it, you have Humpty Dumpty in a nice shirt. Now the next part here is up to you. You can uh, give the shirt some patterns. My version, uh, of Humpty Dumpty wears a striped shirt. So I've got stripes like this. Okay, like that. If you don't like stripes, you can do whatever other pattern you like. Okay, you can have polka dots. Why not? Okay, half, half of a circle here. Some big, some small, right? Even on the sleeves. Right, that's that's polka dot. You can also have um, I don't know uh, stars. You can wear stars or any other kind of pattern. Okay, because it's really up to you. And Humpty Dumpty, I'm sure, has lots of different shirts. You could wear a striped one today, a star one the next day, a rainbow one the next. Right? Okay, and you can even do patterns on the pants if you would like. Give him stripey pants. Completely up to you, okay? So I hope you're following along. I'm, I'm not sure because I can't really see you. I can imagine you at your desk watching this and, and doodling as we're doing this. But, but um, th this next part I'm gonna show you um, is once you know how to draw the face, you can you know, tweak it, you can change small little details and it will make it look completely different. For example, I'm just going to add two lines here. That kind of makes him look a little sleepy now all of a sudden. And if I erase this, instead of a smile, I can give him a different shaped mouth like this. Okay, so now he's looking a little bit more, maybe a little sleepy. He's about to go to sleep. After a heavy meal, sometimes you want to go to sleep, right? All right? So then you can also do um, angry eyes because everybody, everybody gets angry once in a while, okay? Even Humpty Dumpty gets hung angry once in a while. So here I have, instead of a smile, he would have like, um, maybe like this, a bit of teeth showing. And instead of this little circles here, what would an angry person have on his head, coming out of his head? How do you make this person look more angry? Uh, one simple way, very commonly used by cartoonists or illustrators, is you have smoke coming out. I'm sure the kids have seen this kind of uh, little, little details that make your character even more expressive. So yeah, 
smoke coming out of the head, show that he's really fuming, or even more angry than that, he's, he has fire coming out, fire coming out of his head, really angry, all right? And then you could give him some actions, right? He's not just standing there, he's got his fist, he's got his fist and he's shaking. All right, well, this is just an example of how much uh, fun you can have with a uh, simple character. Uh, of course, Humpty Dumpty is very rarely angry. He's often very, very happy like this. He makes himself happy by having all kinds of delicious hawker food. All right, so that's one character. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear the screen. I'll show you another character um, that's also featured uh, in the book. Um, this one, see if you can guess. Well, actually, it's, it's not hard to guess. It's also very simple shapes. I'm going to start with two circles, this time joined together like that. All right, let me make it bigger. Two circles. I'm going to make two smaller circles. These are the eyes, obviously. And then I'm going to make a shape like this. Okay? It's kind of like a flat, like a squash circle. Not exactly a circle. Not exactly an oval either. But that's how I draw it. I like to give this character a smile, like a very cheeky smile. And then I'm going to give this character eight legs. See if you can guess. Well, I guess the answer is already out. Eight legs means it's a spider. This is itsy bitsy spider. Eight legs. All right, because remember, a spider is not an insect. It's got eight legs. And my version of Itsy Bitsy Spider, at the request of Janice and Leanne, they told me they wanted Itsy Bitsy to be a girl. So I said, okay, well, what makes this spider a girl? I added eyelashes. Of course, boys can have beautiful long lashes too, but in the world of cartooning, you want to make some somebody a girl, you give him give her eyelashes. And there you have it. That's one, one more character. All right. Now, but I'm going to show you another version of Itsy Bitsy Spider. I'm going to show you the same thing, two circles. Um, this time I'm going to make him sleepy okay, with his eyelids coming down like this. Same shape for the body. Instead of a grin, he's like maybe frowning. He's getting tired. But actually, let's let's make him smile. Why not? Let's make him smile. But instead of legs like this, okay, I'm going to give the legs a different. I'm going to draw them a different way. I'm going to draw them like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That way, the spider looks really relaxed. And you know why he's relaxed? because he's just hanging, he's hanging. He's got his legs dangling like that. And uh, if you like, you can even give them speech bubbles. Mm. Let's say he just likes to say hello. Maybe his mouth is a little bit open because he's, he's talking like this, all right? So that's two characters, um, Humpty Dumpty and Itsy Bitsy Spider. Do, do I have more time? It looks like I may have a little bit more time. So I'm just going to very quickly, very quickly draw another character. Um, I didn't plan on doing this, but let's see if I remember how to draw my, my, uh, my three blind mice, okay? So three blind mice, they were, well, I'm not going to draw, draw all three because they look similar actually. So that's one, and draw a pointy nose, give him a smile like that, okay? And then I've got the ears, okay? Don't worry if you, do, if you can't catch up, okay? Um, I know that this video is gonna be available later on if you wanna rewatch it, okay? I'm not gonna draw the whole body, just half a body. This is a shirt. Okay. And that's one of the three blind mice. 
And of course you make it dark glasses. And whiskers, you wear shorts, a tail if you like. And very importantly in this book, one of them has a bandage on the tail. Can you guess why? If you're familiar with the original nursery rhyme, three blind mice, they were chased by the farmer's wife who cut off their tails with a carving knife. And that's why you have, you have a, a mouse with a bandaged tail. All right. I think that's, uh, that's almost all the time we have. I hope you enjoyed the session. Um, just remember that doodling is uh, is drawing for fun. So it's really, uh, you're not getting graded. It's for yourself. You can draw um, any way you like, okay? So this is just my example of how I draw it. Make it yours, okay? So I'll pass the time back to Leanne and Janice. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Chow. See, we did, we did, we, we did follow along. Yeah, we were doodling along. <laughs> <laughs> so, children, if you had, um, if you were doodling as well, um, we can't actually see you, but we would like to see what you doodle. So, you could ask your mommy and daddies to share it on their social media and tag us. And at the end of today's program, we'll have our uh, social media handles um, on the screen for you. Okay, so. The next thing we're going to do is, I think, the thing that you're all waiting for, which is quiz, quiz time, time, because you get to win a prize. Okay, so this is how it's going to work. We are going to ask you four questions, and um, if you know the answer, you have to type it inside the comment box. And then uh, Janice and I will choose one winner for each question. And you will actually be winning a copy of the book. Okay, so let's have the first question. All right, question number one. Did Itzy get to drink the Milo dinosaur in the rhyme? Was she successful in drinking the Milo dinosaur? So it's a yes or no question, right? Yeah, yes or no. You got yes. to think about the rhyme, we sang it. Mm -hmm. What happened to Itzy? Mm. Okay, if you know the answer, type it in the box. <laughs> okay, any more? Okay, we've got some no's, one yes. We're going to reveal the answer soon, but we'll wait for you. Yeah. There's a little bit of lag time, I think, so we'll just give you a chance to type in your answer now. Okay, some of you say yes, some say no. Okay, did Itzy get to drink the Milo dinosaur in the rhyme? Okay, and the correct answer is... No, poor No, Itzy. she didn't because she slipped down the Milo mug, right? Mm -hmm. So there are a few people who got it right. And I think the winner is... We have a random way of choosing the winner. And the winner is... Yeah. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Y, y, w, y... Y... W? w? <laughs> Your initials are YW. So for the winners, um, our publisher, World Scientific, will be in touch with you. Okay? So the winner for this question is YW. Okay. So next question, question number two. Now, which of the following ingredients are not used to make roti prata? Let's see. Flour, water, oil, salt, or pandan. So, which one ingredient is not used to make roti prata? Okay. Put your answer in the comment box. All right, and let us know. Not used, huh? Okay, we've got some answers coming in. Mm -hmm. We'll wait for a while. Yep. Mm. Mm. 
Okay, got quite a few answers. Keep them coming. Okay. Okay, okay. All right, so the correct answer is... Pandan. Very Pandan, good. Yeah. You know your roti prata. Yes. Okay, so some of you got it right, but the winner is... Mm, Joy Lam. Congratulations, Joy. Our okay. publisher will be in touch. Yes. Yeah. All right. Next question. Question number three. Oh, okay. This is like a, a multiple choice, but there are only two choices. So it's really easy. Okay. After eating at the Hawker Center, which should we do? A, leave dirty tissues on the table. <laughs> B, clear the tables and put dirty dishes in the tray return station. Oh. Okay, yeah, what super duper easy. Come on, just put in your answer <laughs> A or B. So A is leave dirty tissues on the table. B, clear the tables and um, put the dirty dishes at the tray return station, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, answers coming in. All right. I think we have a winner. Yes. Okay. The correct answer is B. B. Clear the tables <laughs> and put dirty dishes in the tray return station. We knew you'd get it right. <laughs> yes. And the winner we have chosen for this question is Su Law. Congratulations. Oh, Su Law. Su Law, I think. Yeah. Our publisher will be in touch with you. Okay. And now the for last the last question. question. Question number four. Can we have the next slide? What can we bring to the Hawker mm. Center when we are buying food to take away, to tapau, right? Okay, what can we bring? So you can put in whatever you think is the right answer. There's a hint here. Mm. This is good for the environment. All right, waiting for your answers now. Mm. I think the answers are coming in. Okay, mm -hmm. any more answers? There can be quite a few different ones, but you know, as long as it's correct for this question, yeah. Any more? <laughs> okay. Okay. So what would your answer be, Janice? Uh, I would bring a reusable container like a Tinkat or Tiffin Carrier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or a plastic box. Yeah. Something that's reusable. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's the choose a winner. winner is... Mm. Sophia Huang, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Our publisher will be in touch. Yeah. Thank you so much for all your answers. Okay. And congratulations to all the winners. So now for our next section, um, it's Q&A time. Mm. So um, we invite you or your children to ask us any question. Uh, Chow as well. Um, you can ask us anything about the book <laughs> yes just write it in the comment section yes just put any questions you have in the comment section and Leanne, Janice and Chow will be happy to answer them for you yeah mm. so maybe while we are waiting for their questions because there seems to be a little bit of lag uh, maybe I can ask a question that I have for Leanne, okay. Janice and Chow <laughs> So sure. this is such an interesting book and, you know, all of us, we, we grew up singing nursery rhymes and eating hawker food, but I never thought that, you know, these two things can be put together in a book and, and, and come up with such amazing rhymes and songs that we can sing with our families and our friends. So something that I was wondering about was, um, 
Where, when did you get the inspiration for this book and, and how did it come about? How do you manage to make this idea into a reality? Hmm. Um, well, I, I actually wrote a non-fiction uh, hawker food book before. Um, and, you know, I thought it was such an important topic because it's, it's really our heritage, right? So, uh, and we, ha and it's, it's, um, one of the uh, UNESCO um, intangible heritage items. So, um, and I really wanted to pay tribute to our hawkers, um, but because I'd already done a nonfiction book, I thought I needed to write another one that was fun and um, more story-like. So I thought it would be a, a good but crazy idea to, to merge two things together, which is nursery rhymes and hawker food. And I knew that Janice was very good rhyme, at rhyming and she also likes hawker food. Oh, so yeah. I thought, yeah. you know, I, I wanted to have some um, partnering in the rhyming because sometimes you get stuck when you rhyme, you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I wanted to do it with a friend. So yeah, that's how we started. I was very happy that um, Leanne invited me to write this book with her because um, uh, uh, when she gave me the idea, I was thinking, oh, why didn't we think of this earlier, right? And and suddenly all the ideas just came pouring in. And yeah. here we have it, the book. Okay. I see a question from Hong Xin. Hong Xin says, ask what, uh -huh. which is your favorite hawker center and why? Wow. Okay. Mm. I need to think. Chow, if you want to jump in, you can jump in yeah. first. I already have an answer. Very, My answer yeah, is... Uh... <laughs> So my, my favorite uh, hawker center is the one at Chinatown. It's uh, above the mark, the wet market. It's my mm -hmm. favorite because it's, um, I, I visit that place very frequently. I know the stalls. I know where my favorite stalls are. And just the options that you have, it's endless. I haven't tried everything. And also because of the location, you know, because it's in Chinatown, which is a very colorful neighborhood. And there's a very fantastic one of the biggest wet markets downstairs, which is very fascinating to go, especially on a on a on a weekend. Obviously mm -hmm. now not so crowded because of COVID, but you know, in normal times, it's a fantastic, uh, fascinating place to visit. Mm. Okay, mm. you, Janice. Uh, well, I have many favorite stalls, and um, mm. right now my current favorite hawker center is the one at um, Teluk Ayer Street. And I just went there for breakfast very recently, and um, I can't wait to go back. There are just so many things I want to eat there. Mm. What about you? Okay, I'm thinking about dessert right now, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I that sounds good. good. Mm. Yeah, so <laughs> Um, I'm thinking about my favorite chendol stall, which is at um, Bukit Timah Market. There's this like double story um, mm. building and the hawker center is on the second floor. So um, yeah, I go there for the chendol. <laughs> and it's it's like that stall only sells chendol. So, you know, it's good. Well, great. So now we know there are three places that we can go and explore if all of you have not Many tried. more, many more than three. <laughs> Okay. okay, we've got another question from Mu Ming. What factors do you consider in choosing characters to incorporate into the book? Hmm. Hmm. I think one of the things we talked about was um, how familiar the characters would be to children. And we wanted uh, something that children could relate to. Of course, we have Humpty Dumpty, mm -hmm. Three Blind Mice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we actually, okay, this is a secret. We actually <laughs> did try some other nursery rhyme characters, but they didn't kind of work out for the story. So we, we you know, they, they weren't included in yeah. this book. Maybe we'll have a second book. Maybe. I don't know. But, <laughs> but um, for this book, we went with the ones we thought would be very familiar with um, children. And also like the story that we wanted mm. to tell and the food that we wanted to match. Um, if it, it was like a combination of all these different factors coming together, if it worked, it just worked. Yeah. And we would choose that one. Yeah. Sometimes the rhymes write themselves, right? Yes. Like we, we talked about Humpty Dumpty and Kaya Toast and he wrote the story. Yes. Yeah. 
and and there was this thing about whether Humpty Dumpty should eat the soft boiled <laughs> egg, right? We had this big debate about whether Humpty Dumpty should eat soft boiled egg. So if you he's want, an egg. Yeah, yeah, but if you want to know whether he does, then you have to get the book. <laughs> Well, I think some other questions that people might be thinking about is that really the, the rhymes are, are so amazing, but also what makes them come alive are the illustrations. And just now, Chow, you showed us, you know, how you can make the faces change just by little, little details. So something that some of us may be wondering about is, uh, Chow, what was your favourite thing about illustrating this book? It looks like mm. a, a lot of fun to draw. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um quite a bit of research went into it as well. You know, you want to get some of the uh, details about the environment, right? So I had to visit, I, I went visiting uh, hawker centers very frequently during that time. Um, mm -hmm. One of the, my favorite thing about the process was hiding what we call Easter eggs inside each of these drawings. So for example, I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. Uh, for example, in this one called Mary, Mary had a little dessert. Everyone should be familiar with the original nursery rhyme, right? So in the nurse, original nursery rhyme, there's a line that says its fleece was white as snow. So I tried to incorporate that by having one of the stalls called white as snow desserts. <laughs> so it's kind of like a little inside joke. So if you're familiar with the original uh, lyrics, and I'm sure most of us are, you can look out for these little uh, Easter eggs on every single page, actually. There on are these, every uh, single page, wow. Every single rhyme, I think oh, there's something God. something that has to do with the original um, uh, original nursery rhyme. So I had fun doing that. Oh, I also, wow, so oh, fun. The other thing I want to mention is oh, these two little kids here. <laughs> Modeled after my own children, so I wanted to <laughs> have them in there. So cute. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. So this is something that some of our readers may not have noticed if we didn't hear this today. So now everybody, we know that there are Easter eggs, little mm -hmm. secrets. Go and find out. You can go and find them out with your mommy and your daddy. And I think yeah. it's quite fun as well for us who are not so young to go and mm -hmm. look for of our childhood, yeah. more these pages. Yeah. I think I also want to just share um, that, uh, you know, when authors write a, a, a storybook, right, we don't actually imagine we will actually have to sing and act for the book as well. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow, because uh, World Scientific is our, our publisher, uh, and, you know, you were able to incorporate the bonus features into our book. So mm -hmm. we ended up um, having to sing the rhymes as well because it was agreed that, you know, we had to show the children how to, how to, to sing. sing properly and fit in all the words, right? <laughs> so I, I have to say this is a first for me. <laughs> and I'm just so glad that, uh, you know, Janice and Chow were, were game for it as well. Um, in the videos, uh, Janice plays the piano also. Chow plays his ukulele. And I, I really could not have asked for a better combination, uh, you know, uh, to join me in this project. Well, we had a lot of fun. We, we um, recorded all these songs uh, right in the middle of the pandemic and we had to make sure we were all COVID-free before we came together. <laughs> ah, I see. So such a unique project. It's rare that you get a book and then you get to still access people singing and playing along with the rhymes. And I must say, Leanne, Janice and Child, the three of you sing very well. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes this sing. so enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. So uh, um, Le Leanne and Janice sings, and I play the ukulele. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you yeah, are the ones coming in the background. Yeah. <laughs> maybe for yeah, the next. Was, the next yeah, maybe for the next book, we must get child to sing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was a group that my singing voice is not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see for the next book. Well, yeah, it perhaps. seems like ah, our time is up so quickly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as uh, someone says, Hongxin says, thank you for your answers. I'm hungry now. And, yeah, I think that's how we all feel, yeah, ready to have our next uh, hawker food adventure. And so um, 
one hour has just flown by so quickly and we just want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. I'm sure Lian, Janice and Chow were so happy to have all of you participating in the comments and doodling along. So if you enjoyed the rhymes that you have heard today, why not discover more? With catchy rhymes and imaginative illustrations, this book will not only help children learn more about the food of their home, Singapore, but also inspire them in the arts, perhaps singing or doodling. It's going on a 15% discount on Lazada until the 20th of March, so get your copies while you can. And also remember to share your doodles or record yourself singing the rhymes in this book and tag Lian, Janice and Chow on social media when you share your contributions. So once again, thank you very much for spending your evening with us and we wish you and all of your families a good night. Thank you and stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.